Recently, there has been a lot of news surrounding 3D printing in space, and most of it covers the colonization of the Moon and Mars, which as of today is still a theory and being simulated. But there is one aspect of 3D printing actually being done in space right now. That is 3D bioprinting. Two months ago, the International Space Station successfully printed a human meniscus and then sent it back down to Earth. Immediately, I had questions. Why? Why print it in space? Why spend all this money to transport it? Why not just print it on Earth? So let's try and answer these questions as we explore the reason as to why scientists are obsessed with 3D printing in space. 3D bioprinting is a process that uses cells and biomaterials to create 3D tissues. The biomaterials are called bioinks and they mimic the composition of tissue. Bioinks and bioprinting has been gaining steam over the last few years as numerous universities and companies have made breakthroughs in this field. Currently, bioprinting is being used to produce living tissue, bone, and blood vessels, but has yet to produce whole organs. See, a 3D printer relies on layered adhesion to build structures. Each layer must be extruded and hardened in a controlled manner to a specific height and width in order to be accurate. However, the one element that can prevent this accuracy is gravity, specifically the sedimentation that gravity creates in a viscous material. Sedimentation will tend to flatten out each layer under the pull of gravity and settle out the material making the printing process uncontrollable. One way to combat this is the use of supporting structures, also known as scaffolds. As the name suggests, scaffolds support the parts of a structure that would otherwise be printed in mid-air. Bioprinting is no different and relies on these scaffolds when printing on Earth. Organs such as the heart, liver, or kidney are mostly made of soft tissue, as they need to be able to expand and contract during operation. Soft tissues are very difficult to print and nearly impossible without scaffolding due to sedimentation. However, by adding in scaffolding, which is usually a liquid or a gel-like material, you are also potentially adding things that can be lethal to the tissue cells. So, the next step is to remove the need for scaffolds, which means removing gravity. And that's where space comes in. In space, there's no sedimentation. You can bioprint and create a 3D construct that stays in place during printing. On top of that, you can even build a void in the structure, such as a chamber in a heart. And because of microgravity in space, the heart doesn't collapse. Now currently, there is only one bioprinter in space, called the 3D Biofabrication Facility, or the BFF. Built and managed by Redwire, it was launched to the ISS in November of 2022. And less than a year later, it successfully printed a human knee meniscus, which was then brought back to Earth on the Crew Dragon spacecraft on September 4th. The experiment was performed with the Uniformed Services University, which is looking for improved treatments for injuries like meniscus tears that are common among service members. However, that is not the intent of the BFF, and the meniscus was only chosen as it is fairly easier to print since it is mostly cartilage. See, currently 22 people a day are dying on the waiting list for an organ transplant. The ultimate goal of the BFF is to print the organs needed using the patient's actual cells and then ship those organs back down to Earth. Not only does printing the organs shorten the waiting list, but it also creates an organ that is free of defects or diseases. And since the organ is made of the patient's own cells, the risk of bodily rejection is virtually eliminated. Shipping cells and printing organs to and from space is obviously very expensive and, if implemented, will probably be only available to wealthy recipients. Which begs the question, why not print the organs on Earth in an artificial microgravity? Doesn't NASA have that capability in order to train astronauts? Yes and no. Most astronaut training is done in large pools to see how they can perform their duties in a weightless environment. But in order to test equipment, NASA uses parabolic flights from a Boeing 727 and drop towers located at their zero-g facility, both of which involve high altitudes and both of which can only simulate microgravity for less than a minute. There is one experimental device called the 3D Clinostat that simulates microgravity on Earth. However, it involves two sets of frames that rotate constantly in different directions. Aside from the small size and expensive price tag, the rotations would alter the quality of a print. So until technology can catch up, space 
is our only solution. Now what's really interesting is Redwire is currently planning another experiment for the BFF set to launch this month, this time. They will test to see if the BFF can print more sophisticated tissues, including the ability of the cells to operate in rhythm. Now, these are obviously very first steps in a long road to helping transplant waiting list patients. But an organ manufacturing station in space is an intriguing idea, and a lot better than creating clones for harvesting. Thanks for watching.